Okay, so we're gonna start. So, so today we're gonna talk about leveraging listings for more listings. Cause last time we, I, I, I thought we we're gonna talk about hiring, but I'm thinking we should still put this uh, session in because uh, once you get a listing, uh, what most agents don't know is that if you're just gonna get a listing and you're gonna sell the home, then you're wasting that listing. Uh, instead, what you can do is uh, it's a, uh, Use that listings to get more listings. Usually, once you have a listing, you can get at least minimum of three listings. So if you can leverage that listing, then it's a uh, very very efficient, and it's also saves a lot of money, and uh, it's gonna multiply your business. Um, so that's why I said you know it's a it, it, we need to take a more closer look into this so you can take advantage of this uh, strategy. Okay, so there's uh, five major sections, pre-marketing, listing on MLS, open house marketing, at the open house and the sold marketing. So pre-marketing. For pre-marketing, we have the preparation, we have the seller preparation. Uh, you got to market on social media and uh, the offers that you need to have and also the retargeting. So for, for pre-marketing preparation, uh, so usually what I do is once I've assigned the listing on the spot, then I'm going to install the lockbox right there. I, I use a lockbox in my car. So what you can do is, depending on what you install, maybe you're going to install the um, the Supra or the, the combo lockbox. The reason I install lockbox is uh, is for the service providers. For example, termite people, you know, a home inspection or appraisal. So if the owner is, on a home, is not home, so they can access the lockbox. That way you don't have to, you know, drive back and forth. Uh, to, to go open the door. So usually what I do is right after I sign the listings, I take pictures with my phone. This way, I think I answered this question before. This way I can, you know, start pre-marketing right away, right after I do the, uh, the, the listing presentation. And you want to tell the seller what to do to, to, to prepare for the home, for the open house, for photo, photo taking. And uh, also, Immediately, we're gonna order order the you know professional photo. We're gonna reserve a time with the photographer. We're gonna ask the seller when's a good time to take photo, and also uh, usually after time after I take the listing, usually I come out. I just sit in the car and I start writing the description. That way, you know we have the description ready. I already took the photo with my phone. That way, we can start pre marketing right away. And because uh, I, I have some team members, right? So I I finish the I make a description. I make an instruction document on Zillow and not Zillow on on, YouTube, on uh, Google Google mm -hmm. Doc. Then I share the document to all the team members. That way, you know everybody knows what price we should sell the sell the home for. What's the description? What's the special special instruction? You know what the what the seller want? What's the reason seller selling their home? And then obviously we're gonna order the sign installation as soon as possible because you want to get. The signs out there. For example, I was I sold one home. I, I forgot the city, but we we usually put the sign out as soon as possible. So this actually it, ha it happened more than a few times because we already put the sign out there. So some people they drove by, so they saw the home. So they we the home is already sold even before we do the open house. So it's very important to you uh you 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 put out the the for sale sign as soon as possible. And another thing I do is usually I have some signs in my car. So usually after I sign the listings, I come out, I get the sign from my car and I put out the sign at, at, right away. Um, because think about it. If you have a sign, it's a, it's a free advertising. It's a, you don't have to pay any money. You just, you just order the sign. So maybe you're going to pay for the installation, but that's like peanuts, right? It's maybe $30. So as long as the sign is there, it's a free advertising for you, especially if some of the homes they're on the major street, so people drive by every day, they can see your sign. So it's very important that you know you, you put up the sign as soon as possible. So seller preparation uh, for the open house, for the photo shoot. So you want them to remove all expensive items you know, for, for, the, for, uh, for the open house. And also for the photo shoot, you want them to clear all countertops, uh, declutter all the extra items. I usually tell them, I don't need to take picture for all the rooms. So they could either, because some, sometimes when you go to the, owner's home, they have a lot of stuff. So if it's, if it's a, uh, has too much furniture, too much, uh, you know, 
too much stuff, it's going to make the home look small and the photo shoot is not going to look good, right? So usually what I tell them is, you know, try to move all the extra items into the garage. If you do not have the uh, uh, space in the garage, you can even just put all the items in one of, one of the rooms or bedrooms because we're not going to shoot the picture of all the bedrooms. We're only going to shoot the, the master bedroom, master bathroom, the kitchen, uh, the, the living area, and the backyard. So um, try to make the home look as clean as possible and remove as much item as possible. For social media, usually for the pre-marketing, we have a checklist. We have a pre-marketing checklist. Uh, we want to get on YouTube as soon as possible. The reason you want to get on YouTube is because many of the, the real estate website nowadays, they're blocking the listing agent information. So when they block the listing agent information, you know, the buyer, they cannot find you directly. Uh, I think the only website that's showing listing agent contact is Refin. All the other websites, they're blocking, they're purposely blocking uh, seller, uh, listing agent information because they want to capture the buyer leads and they want to sell that leads to you, to the agents. To avoid that, uh, one trick you can use is to, as soon as you, as soon as you sign the listing, upload a video, either, either a video or a, a picture slide of the home. And the name of the picture, I mean, the name of the video is gonna be the exact street address of the property and followed by your name and your phone number. When you upload this YouTube video, you must upload a YouTube video before you upload to MLS. Because let's say if you upload to MLS first, then the, the home listing is gonna get transferred to all the, all the, uh, the major websites. So if you, if you don't upload the YouTube listing, uh, the video first, uh, you upload the MLS first. When people search for the address, they're, gonna, they're not gonna find you. They're gonna find all those other websites. Because some buyers, you know, they don't want to, sometimes they may not want to call the listing agent you know, uh, uh, firsthand. So maybe they're gonna search the address. So if I put my YouTube video first, when they search the address, I'm gonna show up on the first page of uh, Google because Google and YouTube, they're the same company, right? So that's why it's very crucial that you wanna upload a video of the home as soon as possible. So we're gonna pre-mark on social media. We're gonna, you're gonna create a blog uh, for the, okay, George, you have a question? Yeah, uh, my question is, how long does it take for, uh, do you know how long it takes once you upload it on, on YouTube, when it'll be a search engine on Google? Do uh, to, I don't know, know how, exactly how long, but it's usually pretty quick. I think it just takes a couple hours. So that's very important. You do not, never, never upload to MOS unless you have uploaded to YouTube. It's very crucial. Because if you upload to MOS first, anybody search the address, you will not show up on the first page for sure. But if you upload to YouTube first, then you will show up on the first page. Then when they search the address, they're gonna see your video, they're gonna see your name, they're gonna see your phone number. That's the cheapest way, the most efficient way to get on the first page of Google when people search for the property address. Okay. So YouTube marketing, we'll talk about that, right? Upload a video with address as the name, and all, if you want a more uh, exposure, maybe you can pay for the marketing, uh, you know, to, for example, let's say, let's say if your home is in Pasadena, then you can maybe pay, the, the pay for the YouTube marketing. So this is an example of the videos.
the cafe. But remember, yeah. video doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, it could be if you don't have a video, it could be a slide shot of the pictures, or you could be a video from your phone too. So not all my videos are like this. So this is a I so this video is for like a like more expensive homes, like for some other homes you can just take video with your phone. That's okay too. Um, or you can if you don't have the video, just make the video with a uh, with all the photos, make a slide you know like a slide view. Uh, but make sure, no matter what you do, make sure you put up the video before you upload to a mess. And also you wanna have the, uh, the right offers when you do the marketing. Uh, you wanna make sure to say buy this home on a trade uh, because a lot of people, when they buy a home, they have a home to sell. So that's another way to get you more listings. Remember, when you have a listing, remember the, the name of this session, right? Leverage listing to get more listings. So you gotta keep it in the back of your mind. When you have a listing, you need to leverage this listing to get more listings. Uh, so one way to leverage a listing to get more listing is to, you know, to, to solicit the buyers that has a home to sell. So for example, buy this home and trade. For example, upgrade to this home and the Ray will buy yours. So, you know, because 80% of the buyers, when they buy a home, they have a home to sell because they need the proceeds from the selling of their home to buy another home. Usually they're, Either most of the time they're, you know, upgrading. For example, like the, they have more kids, they want to buy a bigger home. Right now they're living in a condo and they want to, you know, um, buy a bigger house, buy a single family house. Sometimes they're downgrading. For example, they're retiring. They want to sell their bigger house. They want to buy a one-story home. So that's why it's a, remember, 80% of the buyers have a home to sell. So that's why when you have a listing, it's a very good opportunity for you to leverage the listings to get more listings. Um, so here are some of the offers, right? Buy this home and trade or upgrade to this home and Ray will buy yours. Or another way, another one is that you can own this home for 20, 20 uh, whatever amount of money with taxes and insurance. So basically you want to use this opportunity, use the list you have to get more listings. So before we talk about pre-marketing, right? So basically what we talked about before, that's everything you do even before you put on MLS. So sometimes maybe, if you do it right, maybe the home's already sold before you put on MLS, right? Because here's the reason you want to do it is because uh, one reason is obviously more exposure, like we we'll talk about on YouTube. Another reason you want to do it is uh, you, you want this, you don't want to waste the, the 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 initial one week of a golden period, because let's say if you if you just put on a Zillow, I mean MLS right away, the the starts the the, the time start ticking, right? The longer it sits on MLS, the harder it's gonna be for, for you to sell. So that's why you wanna do pre-marketing before you list on MLS. Any questions so far with pre-marketing? Okay. So for listing on MLS, we have the pricing strategy. Strategy We're gonna go with the number accuracy, MLS upload, the perfect pictures, the perfect description, how to sell overpriced home and listing on Zillow. Uh, for pricing strategy, if the home price is overpriced, it's going to be very hard to sell. The market is changing. It's not, it's a, I don't know if everybody can feel it. It's, if it's overpriced, it's not going to sell. So you must make sure that it's not overpriced. Uh, also, you want to stay with the whole number. For example, let's say if the home is worth a million dollars, you want to recommend the seller do not list over a million. A lot of times people search in whole numbers, right? They search, for example, 800,000 800, to 900,000. They search for 700 to 800,000. They search for 900 to 1 million dollars. So you do not want you know um, to, to list at a number that's that's a that's over a whole number. And uh, obviously you want to list at either market price or below market price. So be below market price is the best. Even you know fifty thousand dollars or even thirty thousand dollars below market price. That's the best because you're gonna get more interest. That's how you can get multiple offers. And also another matrix you want to know, you want to know how much more buyers, how much more or less the buyers are paying, are willing to pay in the area. For example, let's say if the market, uh, if uh, there's a whole bunch of buyers that recently bought homes. For example, let's say if you look at Rancho Cucamonga, there's uh, 20 buyers that recently bought homes. You want to see these 20 buyers, 
are they overpaying the asking price or are they buying below the asking price? You know, the actual price they pay. If you look at that number, then you will know uh, what, stat what strategy will work in that area. For example, let's say if everybody is a, if a, if everybody is paying less than the asking price, then if you're gonna try to recommend the seller to list at a lower price and hoping people to bid up, that's not gonna happen. Because in that area, nobody is overbidding. That's why you wanna look at that number, it's very important. Uh, only if you know that number, then you can give the seller a good recommendation. Uh, you know, because I know a lot of what a lot of agents do. They, 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 every time they go meet with seller, they say, oh, why don't you list it lower? And then we're gonna have people bid it up, bid up the price. But in some areas that doesn't happen. That's the buyer's not doing that. That's why you need to research. Also, you want to monitor the, the Zillow reviews and the saves. Usually what we do is as soon as we put the property on the market, we'll, we'll, we'll monitor the Zillow views and the saves. Usually if we can get a thousand view on the first day, it means everything is pretty okay. It's like, you know, the pricing is okay. The picture is okay. The description is okay. If we do not get a thousand view on the first day, or if we only get like a you know couple hundred views, that means something's wrong. Either the, the price is not right, or the picture is not right, the description is not right. Something's wrong. You gotta you gotta you gotta change make make the changes right away. Because if let's say if you put it on Zillow on, online and the, the first day first day view on Zillow is only two hundred, and you don't make anything, you don't make any changes, and then you just, you just let it sit there for like a, a month, then you're done because the best time is already gone. You, you, there's no way to save it. So that's why you want to keep close monitoring of uh, the numbers, the views on Zillow. Uh, if it's really low view, you want to see where you can change and pivot uh, quickly so that you can, you can make the increased exposure. Uh, so let's say if, if, if the view is really bad and you don't have much view, and if, then you need to reduce the price. Uh, that's why we talked about, you know, have the seller sign the pre-price reduction form. That way you can just reduce, reduce the price right away. You don't have to ask them for the permission. Okay. Anybody else? Any, any question here? Okay. So you, mu you must make sure when you put on MLS, you, wanna make, you, wanna, you must make sure the numbers are correct. For example, a lot of situations, especially, especially for the older homes, uh, the... Um, for example, let's say if the original square foot is a thousand, uh, fifteen hundred, they they added a five hundred dollar square foot, additional square foot was a permit, but that doesn't show online. So in that situation, I see this happen all the time where the agent doesn't check, and the seller didn't tell them. So they sell the home, they put it on MLS as fifteen hundred square foot, and the and the price is gonna look over overpriced because a lot of buyers they look at the price per square foot. If you only have fifteen hundred square foot. If you're selling the home for, uh, you know, a million dollars, then you people when people see it, it's gonna look like it's seven hundred fifty dollars per square foot. That's too expensive. But that's why you need to make sure you 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 maximize the square footage, legally, right? So if there is addition, five hundred square foot addition, you want to make sure you upload the MLS listing as two thousand square foot. That way, the price per square foot become um, five hundred dollars. It looks much better than a seven fifty. It, that's a, that makes a big difference. You know, that's gonna, the difference is whether you're gonna sell the home or not sell the home. And you're gonna make the commission or not make the commission. So you wanna make sure uh, to always, if it, if it has additional square footage, you wanna make sure you, you, you demonstrate that additional square footage. And also as far as bedroom, bathroom also, you wanna make sure if it has more bedroom and more bathroom, you wanna include that. And for the half bathrooms, uh, when you advertise, you can't just say one because it is a bathroom, right? So let's say, let's say if the home has a two bedroom, two full bath and a uh, one half bath. In that situation, don't say 2.5, just say three. It's going to look so much better, right? MLS upload. You want to make sure to add a video link, upload it. Make sure to update social media input because on the MLS description, there is a MLS section and then there's a social media section. So you want to, for the social media section, you want to input more information because uh, every time you upload to MLS, it's got your your listing information is going to be transferred to thousands thousands of websites. So it's very important you're gonna put more effort into that social media section, the description, the video link, everything. You want to put a lot of information in there. That way, it's gonna get transferred to all the major websites. Again, okay. 
put the when you first put the home on the MLS, no private showing before the open house. The reason for that is you want to make sure all the buyers come to the open house in this one time slot. That way it's going to look like it's very, you know, uh, popular. The home's going to look like it's got a lot of traffic. So no showing, no separate showing before the first open house. Uh, the pictures, when I do it, I only upload seven pictures. The, pic the secret of pick which picture to pick is that the picture has to worth more than the price. For example, let's say if the price is $1 million, the picture you, you upload has to look like it's, the home is worth $1.2 million or $1.5 million, okay? And the first picture must always be the selling point. Let's say if the home has a view, then the first, first picture must be a view. What I see a lot of agents do is that they they put the, um, they, you, they all they do, they just put the outside of the home as the first picture all the time. You cannot do that. You got to put the selling point as the first picture, always. For example, let's say if the home has a view, you want to put the view picture as the first picture, the main picture. Because online, there's so many homes. People, you know, the buyers, they have no time to check out every one. The only way to catch their attention quickly is to is to have the, a really good picture, the main picture and the description, okay? Because they're gonna, let's say if the picture has a view, it stops them. Then they're gonna scroll down to look at the description. So that's why the, for the description, you want the beginning of the description to, the, to be the selling point too. And also for the pictures, do not include any pictures with any negative features. For example, let's say if the home has a stairway facing the door, you do not want to upload a picture. It's like when you go dating, right? When you go to dating website, are you gonna put your ugly picture on the on the dating website? No, right? You, you all the people you see on the dating site, they only put they're not gonna put fifty pictures. You know, like all the agents, they put like fifty pictures. Sometimes like the picture with the thumb in the in the picture of their cell phone. You cannot do that. You do not need all the pictures. Just upload the nice pictures. It's like dating. When you go to dating website, everybody put up their most pretty picture, right? Only maybe five or seven the most. That's what you wanna do. The same thing with uh, when you're selling a home. Right, you want to sell. Here's the thing: it's a two-step process, right? It's a first step. You want people at least pay attention to your listing online. Then the second step, you want to bring them to the open open house. So that's why on the when you try to present package the, the listing online, you want to make make it picture perfect. So here's an example. This is one of the listings I have now. So the market price for this home is actually. Um, when we, when we, before we put it online, Zillow estimate was like $980,000. Uh, but the seller wanted to sell $1.1 1, $1 million. As you can see, it's, a, it's, 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 it's not a straightforward sell because the price the seller want is higher than the market price. So what I did is they wanted $1.1 million. So I put, when, I, when I put online, I first listed at $1.1 then once the 1.1 price is uh, established, I quickly reduce it to, I, I quickly reduce it to 1.1 1, 1, 1, The reason, wh why do I want to do that? Somebody tell me, why do I want to do that? Why do I list that 1.1 and then reduce 50,000? It's a psychological thing where, where, oh, it's, they dropped the price. So exactly. it's the deal. Exactly. Remember, Everything we're doing online, we're trying to create the perception of a deal. That's the key. Everything you do, like everything I talked about so far, the description, the picture, the, the, the uploading strategy, everything we're doing here, we're going after one purpose. We're trying to create a perception of deal. Why do you want to create a perception of deal? Because only if people per perceive it as a deal, then they're going to come to the open house. If they think the home is overpriced, they're not going to come, right? So that's why the, for this home, the, the market value initial, the estimate was 980, but the seller wants to sell at 1.1. Then I told the seller, I said, hey, if you're gonna just put 1.1, it's gonna be hard to sell because nobody's gonna come. They're gonna think it's overpriced. Then the seller said, oh, okay, then I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, agree to sell at 1.05. I'm okay with that because for this kind of higher range price home, it's, it's, it's not that easy for people to bid up. So because the seller wanted 1.1, if we put that at 1 million, I don't think people's gonna bid up at $100,000 in that area, okay? So that's why when the seller agreed to, to list it, at, uh, to, 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 to sell the home at the, uh, 
one to list the home at one million fifty thousand. Then what I did is I first upload at one point one million. Then I re reduce fifty thousand. And then, like George said, then it shows that we have a fifty thousand reduction. It, so when people see that, it per they perceive it to be something that's positive, it to be a deal. And also when you do that, it shows that it, it gives the buyers the impression that the seller is negotiable, that the seller is, is motivated, right? If I don't do that, if I just upload to 1 million 50,000 right away, it doesn't show price reduction. And the, the 1 million five is more than, it's like $70,000 higher than the estimate of $980,000 then nobody's going to look at it. Nobody's going to come because they think it's overpriced, right? So, and the, the funny thing is when we first put on Zillow, when, before we put on Zillow, the Zillow estimate for this home was $980,000. But once we upload at 1.1 million and we reduce it to 1 million 50,000, the decimal actually increased to one point, as you can see, increased to 1.1 million and $9,600. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Maybe because when I first uh, uploaded the listing, I asked, up uploaded at $1.1 million. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. But now you see that people, you have to do this. You, so we're, I, I'm, I'm trying to share with you how to sell a home when it's overpriced. You got to use these strategies. If you do not, you're just going to upload whatever and just, just let, wait for people to see. It's going to be hard to sell. So this is how you sell the home when it's overpriced. Okay. So now, as you can see, when people look at these numbers, it looks like a good deal, right? One million fifty, fifty thousand dollar price reduction, and the estimate is one point one million nine hundred sixty six nine ninety six hundred dollars, right? So that's what you want to create. You want to create a perception of a deal. So we're gonna look at the pictures. As you can see, the picture, right? I said no more than seven pictures. What's the first picture? Why do I put this picture as the first picture? Why? Because that's that's what makes the house sell. It's the view of the mountains with the snow. Exactly, exactly. Selling. The first picture has to be a selling point. I all the time I see. So yesterday I went to a, a home in Newport Coast. The agent is actually the owner himself. He has been selling this home for like half a year. He has a wonderful wonderful view of the home. He did upload the picture of the view, but he put that picture of the view as the last picture. So when you look at the first picture, nobody knows this home has a view and he doesn't put that in the description. <laughs> so, and the, just to let you know, FYI, FYI, a home with a view, without a view, the price difference could be as much, as little as $500,000, as much as a million dollars between the home with a view and without a view. So the first picture has to be the best picture. It, the first picture has to show the biggest selling point of the home, okay? And also, if the home, if the picture doesn't look, look nice, you don't even need to post it. You don't, you don't need to have a picture of every section, every section of the home. Let's say if the master bathroom looks really bad, if the picture looks really awful, do not upload it. Because when you upload it, when people see the picture look awful, they're not gonna come. But if you do not upload the master, bathroom picture, they will come because they're very curious. Okay, I like the other part of this home, but I don't know what the master bathroom look like. So I'm gonna to come to the open house and take a look, right? Because sometimes when the, just because the picture is offered doesn't mean the home is offered, right? So, so that's why the key, the key is you wanna make sure they come to the open house. It's two-step process, right? You gotta let them, let them see it first online, let them find you online first and then fish them in. It's like fishing, right? You're trying to fish them in. You want the goal is you want to make to make sure they come. So as long as they come, here's the thing, right? Let's say if we have 10 offers, sometimes the buyer, the seller tell me, oh, I want to make sure I qualify every buyer. I said, don't do it. Don't do it. I said, we don't care if they qualified, they are qualified or not. Let's say if we get 10, we because we want to make sure we want to encourage everybody to make an offer. Even doesn't matter if they qualify or not qualify. We want to make sure everybody to make the offer. Let's say if you got 10 offers, even if nine of the offers are not qualified, we don't care because we want as many offers as possible. That's way you know, we can tell people, hey, we have 10 offers. That way we can tell the, the buyer that's qualified. We tell that buyer, say, hey, we have 10 offers. We have this offer is uh, $1.1 million. Uh, uh, would you uh, think, uh, what, 
would you be agreed to you know match this price? It doesn't even matter if the person that made off one point one million dollars qualified or not. We just want the offer, so we can tell the other buyers you know we have you know this offer. So as you can see, I'm I'm putting the first picture as the you know, the view, and also I'm selecting this picture because the high ceiling. So you want a center, you want to emphasize the selling points, right? The high ceiling, that's what people like, right? And also the, so for this home, I didn't even upload the front of the picture because this phone, home, the exterior picture color, it doesn't look very modern. It's like one of those uh, dark, you know, brown color. It doesn't look nice. So I didn't even upload the front of the exterior of the home. Like I said earlier, right? If it doesn't look good, do not even include it. You don't need all the pictures. So that's why I uploaded this side picture with some flowers and the trees. So it looks actually nicer. So if they want to see the inside of the home, then they need to come, right? Or if they, if they want to see the outside of the home, they need to come. Any question about this, about the pictures? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I have a quick question here. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure, you know, my standard is correct or not, but um, I barely remember uh, they're saying is uh, uh, CIM uh, uh, request, you know, you have to have the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the front door, you know, that building picture on MS. Is that okay. true? Okay, so here's the thing about C the MLS, okay? The MLS is, is basically a Nazi. Yeah, like a, like a gangsters, okay? <laughs> They have all these laws, regulations. They want you to, you know, um, for me, I, okay, I'm not telling you to do what I do, but here's what I do. My goal is to do the best for the seller because I'm not answering to MLS. I'm answering to the seller because the, the seller is paying me. MLS is not pay, paying me, okay? So I'm going to do what's best for the seller. Sometimes even if there's a violation, if I, if I have to pay for a fine, I'm okay. Let's say if I pay $100, fine, but I make $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, $50,000. $50, I don't care. As I make $50,000, I pay $100, fine. It's okay. Even if I pay $1,000, fine, that's okay. But I'm not telling you to do this. This is what I think because I'm, I'm working for the seller. I'm not working for the MS. MS, they have a whole bunch of rules. You know, they have this rule, that rule. You know, if, you, if it's going to, you know, please them, you know, you, you don't need to work anymore. That's, that's what I think. So you, you can decide what you want to do, okay? Did I answer your question? Okay, we're gonna move on, okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so description, we're gonna talk about description. So the description is, is the same, along the same line as the picture. You wanna show the selling point as quickly as possible, as early as possible. You wanna make, make it appear to be a deal. You wanna show that as a deal. Uh, so for example, look at this description. So this is a description that we have for the for this home. So the biggest selling point for point for this home is actually Victoria Garden. Actually, we, sh we should have put the Victoria Garden as the first picture. We should add the picture of the Victoria Garden too. Uh, so now I, it kind of reminded me. Uh, so Madeline, uh, Jen, are you, are you in this group too? If you are, make sure you add the picture of the Victoria Garden into the Zillow and the MLS, okay? Because that's a major selling point. So this one, the first sentence, right? Buy this home and a trade. Because why? Because we want to, you know, uh, uh, attract the buyers that have a home to sell, right? And then this one, the major selling point, master bedroom downstairs. You know, some people, they want master bedroom downstairs. Uh, what's another sell major, major selling point? Just a few minutes walk from Victoria Garden, right? So a lot of people, this perceived to be a very uh, strong selling point. A lot of people want to buy a home nearby Victoria Gardens. That's why we, we talk about this in the beginning, right? So what I see a lot of agents do is they usually have a straight, they usually have the same format. They talk about the home first, then they talk about location first. Don't do that. If it has, a, if the location is a big starting point, then stay in the beginning. That way people can see it, you know what I mean? And also we talk about uh, tucked in the secluded street on a private corner lot. Why do I say that? Because safety, right? So for a home that's like a everyday home, you want to emphasize safety. For a luxury home, you want to emphasize uh, the high ceiling. So for example, this home is, is, is not a complete luxury home, but it's a you know, million dollar range. So we also talk about the luxury uh, factor. For example, splendid high ceiling in the living room, high ceiling, right? That's a, that's a big starting point too. There's nine store schools. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you notice in the beginning, 
three or four sentence is all about the major selling point, the biggest selling point. So it's very important. And also another thing to do for the description, do not say anything that's not important. Do not talk about redundant information. Oh, this home is three bedroom, four bath. Don't say that because it's already, people already know how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. People already know how big it is. Do not include those the useless information. You want to make sure to emphasize the selling point of the home in the description. Do not repeat anything that people already know. Do not waste that, you know, the, the paragraph. Anything, any more question about description? So I'll, I'll say a little bit more. For the average price range home, you want to talk about safety, you want to talk about uh, convenience, you want to talk about privacy. So for the luxury home, you want to talk about the prestige, you want to talk about the privacy, you want to talk about a gated area, uh, you want to talk about... so. There's people of that's buying home in a different price range. They have a different, you know, demand, right? Any any other questions? Okay, we're gonna move on. Okay. Okay. So we actually already talked about this. So I'm gonna go through it quickly again. How to sell a price that's overpriced, a home that's overpriced. So if the home is over, let's say if the home is worth one million dollars, seller wants to sell at one point one million fifty thousand. You list it at 1.1 million, they reduce the price to $1,050,000 after Zillow have record of $1.1 million. So it shows the price reduction and the Zillow estimate will catch up to your listing price. I think it does, okay? So if it still doesn't sell, then you need to ask seller to reduce the price. When you list on Zillow, so actually nowadays you cannot list on Zillow anymore, it's all automatic and you cannot make changes on Zillow anymore. Before, like a couple years ago, you were able to make changes and update directly on Zillow. Now they do not allow you to do that anymore. So the only way you can make changes on Zillow is by making changes on MLS. And then MLS will, you know, it will transfer data to Zillow. And one thing to remember, uh, because a couple of years ago, uh, Zillow changed, MLS changed. For your listing to show up on Zillow, you have to sign a form, I think a release form with MLS. Till nowadays, I still see some agents that they list the home but never show up on Zillow because they never sign that form. You want to make sure to sign that form so that your home lists on Zillow. Because if it doesn't list on Zillow, then you're doing the seller a big disservice. So again, you want to make sure the first, first picture is the selling point on Zillow. You want to make sure the description is you know, the right description. You want to make sure that it shows the price drop. So sometimes let's say if the seller wants you to increase the price, then what, you, let's say, because I have this one home, I think uh, we need to make changes. Jen, are you here? Madeline, if you're here, make sure for the field crash in El Monte, you want to make sure that the arrow is down arrow because that home we listed at 780. No, we listed at 750. And then we increase to 780. But if you do not do anything about that, then the Zillow is going to show a $30,000 price increase. That's not going to look very good. So in order to show the price drop, Let's say if I initially I was listed at 750, if seller wants to increase that 780, what you need to do is increase to 790 and then drop, uh, drop another 10,000 to 980. That way it will show the down arrow. It will show that, it will show down arrow on, on, on MLS. It will also show a price drop on Zillow. You, you, you always want to see the price drop on, on Zillow because let's say if it's a price, if it shows a price increase on Zillow, the buyers, they don't even want to bother with it because they, they think the seller is not serious, right? And also on the MLS, when you look at the listing list, you will see the down arrow, up arrow, that's a price drop, price increase too. The agent, sometimes they kind of skip the, the home that has a price arrow up because they don't want to deal with seller that's, that's difficult, right? Okay, anybody have any question on listing on Zillow? Okay, open house marketing. So for the open house marketing, you only want to advertise online 30 minutes open house, maximum one hour. Let me tell you why. I don't know if you, did I share with you guys about this before? So most agents, they do a three hour open house. The problem with that, that people, you know, buyers, they just, they, they just taking their time. You know, they, sometimes they, they ask you to, can you wait for 30 minutes? Even if you have three hour open house, they're still going to come late. And uh, every time when they come, nobody's around. So they, they think nobody wants the home. So that's why online, you want to advertise 30 minutes only. That way, everybody's motivated to come because they don't want to miss the open house. Another good thing is that when you have a short time window, 
then when they come, they see all the buyers nearby. Then they're gonna be more motivated because they're gonna, they're worried that people are gonna other buyers are gonna take is gonna you know bid overbid the home. So they they're gonna they're gonna be more motivated. So that's why online you always say thirty minutes or maximum one hour. But of course you know there if there's more buyer then you can stay for longer. Like the cup like last year I did, I sold a home in Los Angeles we put online for thirty minutes. We had two hundred people two hundred buyers came. We end up staying for like uh, three hours. So online only write a short open house period. You know, for the marketing, you want to update, update all social media of the open house. You want to tax blast the neighborhoods, the buyers, two days before, one at least one or two days before, you want to email broadcast all buyers. You want to put up the open house sign as soon as possible, preferably the night before, if not the morning, the morning of the open house. Also, you want to, if you have time, you can distribute the flyers to the neighbors the morning before the open house. So this is sample flyers I use. Uh, so I have the selling point here on top, master bedroom downstairs. So so this flyer is is a is a meant to for the potential seller to see, right? Because there's a lot of every time we do open house, the the owners in the neighborhood they're gonna come to the open house when they think of selling the home, they wanna come to check out how how you do the open house. So that's why I say here get that you get at least five percent more money for your home, and then I have the address and the time of the open house. And down here I have a link. If they scan it, they can check out how much their home is worth. That way I can capture their information. So scan QR code to see how much your home is worth. Any question about this? Okay. So oh, wait, home... actually I have a, oh, never mind. It looks oh, like go, ahead. Go, go ahead, yeah. Oh, it looks like on your next slide, you're gonna talk about it. In terms of um, text blasting the neighborhood, like where are you getting those numbers? I'm assuming it's some type of public information. No, we got the number from because uh, we have Red X for the for the expired cold call. Oh, that's right. I remember you talking about that. The Red X, there is an option you can pay. There is an extra feature you can pay. It's called a geo lead. So you just pay for that extra feature. Then they then for the when you search the geo lead, it will pull up the numbers of the neighbors. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Open house marketing, like I said earlier, right? Only uh, advertise thirty minutes. Update all social media. Tax blast neighbors. Okay. Okay, tax blast. Uh, you want to tax blast all status change, new listing, open house, buyer looking in the area. Uh, okay, add the open house. Anybody have any question about uh, open house marketing? Okay, now we're going to talk about what to what to do at the open house. Okay. So remember, the goal of the open house is not to sell the actual home. Is to get leads, to get seller leads and buyer leads. So it's not about selling the home. It's about it's best for getting the listings actually. So the chance a buyer will buy at the home, the, the the actual home is very low, but the prospective prospective buyers and uh, sellers will visit and check you out. Okay. So before the open house, you want to sell it to prepare this preparations must be must the home must be priced correctly. If it's overpriced, it's not it's not gonna have a good turnout. Uh, you want to check Zillow for view counts. You want to install open house signs. Uh, materials you want to have is a you know a signing sheet, uh, brochures, business cards, uh, shoe covers, hand sanitizers. So agent needs to prepare uh, this you know uh, sign sheet brochures. Okay, the open house process. When the seller, when the buyers come, you want to ask them questions and collect information. Ask them to sign the sign up sheet uh, before showing the home. So when you show the, uh, then you're gonna show the home. Uh, I'm gonna have one more slide talk about the, you know, what to do and not to do when you show in the open house. So after they finish the open house, then you're gonna ask them for feedback, and uh, then you're gonna try to make an appointment with them if they have a home to sell. Then you're gonna to try to make appointment with them if they have, if they want to if they're willing to work with you as a buyer's agent, then you want to make appointment with them. And then after the open house, you want to follow up, you know, call them to see if they want to make an offer or if they have any questions. Okay, open house script. So when the buyers approach the home, you say, okay, can you fill out this form? Then basically they're gonna fill out the name, phone number, and email. 
And then you want to ask them, do you have a home to sell before you buy? Because you want to know if they're a seller, right? If they say yes, then you say, what's the address? Then you write it down. Uh, then, then they're going to go walk the house. So after they finish, you look at the house. Uh, so here's the thing. When they're walking the house, you don't want to like follow them the whole way. You want to give them you know, freedom, give them some room to, to, to wander on their own, to check out the house on their own. Maybe if you see that they're almost done, then you can, you can come up and uh, talk and uh, chat with them to get some feedback. So do not ask the open-ended question. Sometimes you, a lot of agents say, oh, how do you like the home? They say, yes, no, then it's, then it's done. Don't, don't do that. For example, one question you can ask, on a scale of one to 10, how would you score this home? Right? Then they say, oh, maybe seven, eight, then you have a much better idea on you know, how much do they like the house, right? And also, you can ask, if you want to figure out more about what they want, right? So you say, what did you like about their home, this home? Or what did you not like about this home? This is a good, these are good questions for you to know what they're looking for, right? And also what's the most important, you know, for the, uh, for the home that you're looking for. So the open house do's and don'ts. Do not follow buyers all the way. You want to give them uh, some room for them to check it out on their own. Uh, so also if they refuse to give you information, you know, you can actually refuse to show them the home. Let's say if they don't want to give you information, you say, okay, uh, actually the seller requested that anyone that comes to the open house needs to sign in for security purpose. So if they don't sign, you can, you can refuse to show them the home, okay? And also do not ask yes or no questions. So after you sold the home, remember, everything we're talking about here is how to leverage listings to get more listings, okay? So... When you get a listing, you're not just going to sell the home and then make that commission. What you want is sell the home, make the commission, and get three more listings or four more listings, five more listings. So sold marketing, get the three R's, sold, sold sign installation, sold marketing on social media, sold marketing videos, sold postcards. What's the three R's? Reviews, repeat, referrals. Worthy cost, fan base. So usually you want to get a review when they're most happiest. Usually, you know, during each deal, there's always, you know, it's very rare that something doesn't go wrong. So if you're going to try to get them a good review from them at the end, a lot of times maybe they're not going to be happy to give you the review. So you, you, you want to ask for the review when they're the most happiest, when they're most satis satisfied with you. That's when the home is sold. So as soon as, long, as, soon as the home becomes pending, you want to ask them for the review, okay? So how do you make sure they, they, how do you make sure they, so how do you make sure they agree to, uh, how do you make sure they, uh, they, they give you the reviews? You wanna make sure to exceed the expectation. The only way they're gonna give you a review and give you repeat business and uh, refer customer to you is when you have exceeded their expectation. How do you make sure you exceed their uh, expectation? You must know first know what their expectation are, right? If you do not even know there was their expectation, how can you exceed their expectation, right? So, for example, let's say uh, what's the most important for the seller is to uh, is to get uh, to sell the home at, at a million dollars. The price is the most important. Then you're gonna know that, right? So let's say if the the seller most important for them is to sell the home at a million dollars. If you sold the home at a million dollars, then you have meet you have met the expectation, right? So, if that's the case, the seller may not meet, may not be too happy because you just did what you're supposed to do, right? So in that case, maybe they're not gonna give you a good review, or maybe they're not gonna re refer a client to you, or maybe not, they're not gonna buy a home from you again, or have you to help them to sell the home. Let's say if they wanted one million dollars, and if you sold their home for if you sold their home for uh hello if you sold their home for uh. $1,050,000, then you have exceeded the expectation. You, you help them got $50,000 more. So in that case, they're gonna for sure review you, give you a good, repeat, uh, give you a good review and uh, send, more, send you more business and refer you to their friends and family. But do not assume that what they want. You gotta make sure you know exactly what they want. Sometimes the seller may want a better price. Sometimes the seller, maybe they want to, uh, to get the home sold faster, or sometimes the seller, they want, maybe they want to get the home sold with no hassle. So you have to understand exactly what they're trying to achieve. You have to know exactly what would they consider that their expectation has been met. 
And then once you know that, then you can exceed the expectation. If you do not, if you do not even know what they're expecting, how can you exceed, exceed the expectation, right? So the key to get the three R's is you must exceed the expectation uh, to get the reviews, repeat business and referrals. And also sometimes we ask for, for the review, repeat and referrals. You wanna show them that you're, you have worthy cause. You're, you're doing something for the community. You're donating, you're, you're doing something for the society. That, that way, you know, it shows a good deed, right? Anyone has any question about this? Okay, so this is a sole marketing sign. So when we sell a home, we ask the seller, hey, we ask the buyer, can we, can we put this sold sign on, the, on your home? So it, it's gonna stay there. So more buyers, more sellers or buyers in the neighborhood can call you when they see the sign. So this is, social, this is sometimes what we post on social media when we sell the home. Uh, so you want to, if it's sold fast, you want to show it. If it's sold for more than the asking price, you want to show it because you want to show to the other prospective sellers that, that you can get the more money for them. You can sell their home quickly, right? So for example, this one, I just sold in five days, $25,000 over asking. So this was actually, I think one or two years ago. So back then $25,000 over asking, that's pretty impressive. And getting a sold in five days, that's very impressive too. So you want to, so you can make this kind of a, you know, marketing and you can put it online on, on all the social media so that, you know, to get more sellers. So also when you get a good review, it's very important to get a review because when you have a review, it's not just you telling people how good you are. It's your customer telling people how good you are. Okay. So for example here, we highly recommend Ray Chen. He was very professional and explained everything in detail about the process and sold our home for even more than we were asking for. And he did that in the month, okay? Okay, postcard mailing, uh, postcard sold marketing. So this is, like we talked about this last time, I think uh, was Edward, I think it was Edward, right? He, he was talking about, uh, he wanted to spend a $5,000 budget uh, to mail postcard every month. If you, if you do not, initially, if you don't have that kind of budget, just start with sold marketing first. Because this way is not as a you know, budget incentive intensive, and also your and also it's more targeted, and the 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 success the success ratio is going to be much higher, and also you are showing that you already made something a success, you already sold the home successfully, so it's more likely to get people to contact you. So one way I do it is uh, instead of let's say instead of sending out seven hundred fifty just sold car at once, a more efficient way is a uh, I, as soon as the home become pending, I sold 200, I send the 250, 250 sold postcard. At the pending, after another week, I sold, I, I sent another 250 just sold postcard at week two. And at week three, I, I sent another 250 just sold postcard. All these postcards sent to the same people, but three times. Because instead of, let's say, if you're gonna sell, send to a thousand sellers, Maybe you're gonna get very low uh, response because you know most people they don't see it or sometimes they throw it away. But if you send the same same seller three times the postcard, if they do want to sell home, they're gonna notice, right? So that's 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 why we want to want to send the postcard with this strategy with this schedule. So this is an example of the postcard. Uh, so if you notice the, the yellow sticker, I have four more buyers looking to to move in the area. Call me if you are thinking of selling. So this is where realistic, right? Because you know people say, "Hey, you just sold this home, and you still have full buyers." So when the sellers see it, you know they're they're very likely to to call you. So um, we have some statistics, and we have the you know uh, address sold. Uh, so for this one, we didn't sell for more than asking, so we didn't say it. But if we sold for more than asking, we're gonna definitely say it. Okay. So on the back side, then we have the other testimonials. So this shows that I'm not bullshitting. I'm not just, uh, you know, uh, you know, say, make stuff up. So if they have some, you know, doubt about you, when they turn around, they can see all these, uh, you know, reviews from other sellers. Okay, that's it. Uh, we did pretty good. So I think we started around 10, 15, I think. So now it's 11.04. So any, any question on what we covered today? And by the way, you guys can follow me on TikTok and YouTube. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough, uh, focus on TikTok because uh, TikTok pretty much right now is like a uh, free money. If you, if you post on TikTok, it's pretty much free money because uh, like, for example, one of my videos, I got $500,000 views. 
not 50,000, 500,000 views on one video. If you're going to try to do that on YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you're going to pay a lot of money. That's, you're probably going to spend at least $1,000 to get that many views. So I did not pay a single dime. So you want to focus on TikTok. TikTok is the best time to grow. So TikTok right now is like Facebook 10 years ago. So if you're going to focus on growing it, you're going to grow, you can grow a lot of followings. Like I started TikTok. Uh, so I think last night, I already, my followers increased to uh, 7,000 already. So it's growing very quickly. So take advantage of TikTok, uh, register and come and just, just, just document your life. Like right now we're, uh, just document your life, you know, whatever you do as a realtor, you have a, you go into a listing appointment, you go into show a home, just, just short of show, uh, shoot a short video. It doesn't have to be that long. It's, uh, it's only in 10 minutes, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Uh, actually, and what I found out is actually the shorter video actually, actually perform better. So you don't need to shoot like a 10 minute video, just 10 seconds, 15 seconds. It doesn't take that much time. The important thing on TikTok is a frequency. Uh, so right now, initially I started by up, uploading three videos a day. Now my goal is upload 30 videos a day. So, <laughs> so I, I haven't been constantly reaching that goal, but there's a couple of days I did 30 videos a day. So yesterday I think I up uploaded like a 28 videos or something. So, so you want to definitely take advantage of a TikTok because uh, it's a, let's say, so some, some of you may ask, why do you do TikTok? Here's the thing. If I can, you know, have a following, maybe like, for example, for example, 100,000 or a million following, that's like the same equivalent. You have a free billboard on the, on the freeway. You know how much you pay for a billboard on the freeway? At least $10,000 a month. That's like, you know, free money. Anybody have any questions? So keep on doing what's, your, what's already working for you. So try to, you know, work on get your first listings. Once you get your first listing, then you can leverage that listing to get more listings. Okay. So any questions uh, we can talk about? Any? any? Yeah, Ray. Yeah. yeah, this is Michael. I have a question here. Okay, yeah. So uh, I, I I saw I just saw you have a uh, you know if you uh, you you guarantee to sell the home, yeah. and if you cannot sell, you just you you can buy it. So uh, can you talk about uh, you know the uh, strategy of this uh, you know? Okay. Uh, so so how you, do you, uh, go ahead. Finish. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 You, you, uh, how how to do it? Can Can you tell us something about it? Okay. So for the home guarantee. Uh, here's this couple of scenario. So when I go to leasing presentation, because usually when we book the appointment, we tell them we have two options. We can either buy your home or we can, or we can get at least 5% more money for your home. So the only way I'm going to buy the home, so when I go to leasing presentation, I tell them, hey, uh, if, you're, if you're in a hurry, if you really want to sell the home fast, you know, I have an investment company. We can buy your home, but it's not going to be at full price. It's going to be, you know, no more than 70% on the dollar, you know, 70 cents on the dollar. That's the only way we're going to buy your home if you are in a hurry. But if you're not in a hurry, then this option is, is, is not the right option for you. If, you. if you want to get the most money, then what we can do is we have multiple marketing programs where we can get you at least 5% more money for your home. So which option do you think it it's, uh, works better for you? Which option do you prefer? Okay. I see. Yeah. So, so that means if the seller is, you know, uh, in a hurry and, uh, yeah. you know, they want to sell their home uh, uh, you're pretty quick, then you can find a cash buyer or you can buy it with 70% uh, of the price that they want, yes. right? For example, let's say if they're in foreclosure, if they don't sell their home, the bank's going to take the home. Let's say if the bank is going to take the home, they're going to lose their, all their equity. So in that kind of situation, they will be incentivized to sell the home at a 70% on a dollar, right? Because if they don't sell it, then the bank's gonna take the home and they don't, they end up with no equity. If, I, if they sell to me, even if they don't make money, even if, I, they don't, even if they don't take any money home, at least I can save their credit. At least they're not gonna have a foreclosure record on their credit score, right? Because if they have a uh, foreclosure uh, uh, on their credit score, they're not gonna be able to buy another home in, I don't know, five years, seven years? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So yeah. that way we can save their credit. And uh, 
if you want, if you want to sweet the deal, sweeten the deal a little bit more, maybe we can say, okay, let's say if you just, if you sell to me at 70, 70, 70% of the dollar, maybe I can give you, you know, if they don't have a quick, uh, any equity inside, maybe I, maybe I can tell them, hey, I can give you 10,000 just to, you know, to help you out. Or if they have some credit, I mean, if they have some equity in the home, then, you know, that's even better because they're going to be able to take some money home if they sell to us. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Rui, can you go back to last page, please? Yes. The page before, yeah, before this. Yeah, this page? Uh, yeah. Let's see what's from, okay, review. Got it, thank you. So here's the thing, because there are two types of clients, right? There are clients that you already know, and then there's clients you do not know, right? For the clients you do not know, it's very crucial that you have uh, reviews. Because the people that don't know you, if you're just talking how talking about how good you are, they don't believe you, right? They're not gonna believe you because you can make up stuff, right? But if I show them, you know, hey, I have all these reviews, it's not just me saying I'm good, it's the client saying I'm good, right? Then it's much more, you know, believable. And uh, every time when I go to listen presentation, I, I show the reviews too. For example. It's also depending on what type, what type of personality the people, the person are, the seller is. For example, if the seller is really critical, they're the engineer type, they're the accountant CPA type. For those people, you, gotta, you wanna show as many of this evidence as possible to, you know, to, to help them, to convince them that you, you're not bullshitting, to, to, to show them that you are legit, right? Oh, this is a, your postcard instead of your presentation page. So you send it like a postcard and on your reviews only, or you have the other side, back side is your house. This, this is the back side. This okay, got it. Okay, that makes sense. This is the back. This is the two side of the postcard, yeah. Oh, I see, got it. Thank you. So, yes, on the postcard, this, this sticker is really nice. You wanna you know, put this sticker in, yeah. Any other questions? Go register TikTok. You can follow me, it's Ray Chen CO. Is free advertising, free. Anybody else any question? Even no question, we're gonna, any question, any feedback, I any, mean, uh, yeah. So try to go out there, get your first listing. I'm telling you, the first listing is always, the, anytime you do, the, do something for the first time, it's always the hardest. But as soon as you done it for the first time, then, Everything after that is going to be so much easier. But when you're trying to do it for the first time, you might fail a couple of times. You might give it a try first time, it doesn't work. Maybe you're going to give it a try a second time, it doesn't work. Maybe you're going to give it a try a third time, it doesn't work. But as soon as you've done it right once, as soon as you've done it once, then it's going to be, it's going to be so easy. No matter what, get that first listing first. Do all you can to get it. Once you get it, so for example, I'll share, I'll share with you my experience. Before I got a listing, I was always thinking, oh, how can I get more listings? How can I get more listings? How can I get more listings? But once I got the first listing, once I become really good at getting listings, so right now, uh, most of the time, my listing, my active listing is about 20, 20 active listings. Because once you get one listing, then you can leverage that listing, get more listings. When people are gonna call you, you're gonna get seller leads on the open house, you're gonna get the seller lead on the when people call in, they have a home to sell when, when they want to buy your home. So it's that's why it's very crucial. You want to do whatever you can to get that first listing. Once you get that first listing, then you get that chip off your shoulder. Then you you know you can do it. And also you can leverage that listing to get more listings. So do whatever you can. Try as hard as you can. Doesn't matter how many times you fail. Just keep keep doing it. Keep trying. Keep trying until you sign that first listing. Yeah. Hi, Ray. Yeah, uh, you know, I have a last uh, question. Yes. Uh, I use your strategy to get my first listing. You did? Yeah. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> what strategy did you use? Uh, you know, just to tell them that I can sell their uh, uh, I can sell her home for a little more money. Okay. <laughs> And more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then, awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. And also, you know, actually, she signed a contract with another agent. Okay. Wow. The tenant, 
uh, still, you know, inside the house. Okay. So they cannot sell the home. Then I take it over. Yeah. Okay. So the so seller signed listing with another agent. So uh -huh. before me. Yeah. Before you. So after you talk to the seller that you can give them more money. So they, they canceled that the listing with that agent and they signed with you. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. What's the question you have? Yeah, but the next problem is that uh, these this seller cannot speak English, just a little, little. Okay. And then she she uh, continued to use me as her uh, translator, you know, to do a lot of things for her. <laughs> what, yeah. what, what what they're using you to do? Okay, you know, the American tire uh, damaged the one bolt of her uh, uh, wheel, the bolt of her uh, car's wheel. And uh, and uh, they didn't admit that's uh, their fault. And then uh, I I went to the American Tire and uh, you know to talk with them and uh, you know uh, to ask uh, uh, the uh, ask the store to you know to pay for that damage. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually a very important topic. As a realtor, you you must manage your time and you, you must view your time uh, as very precious. You cannot be a uh, like a I don't know housekeeper or whatever for the sub for the client. You cannot. You should not do it. Mm. Uh, but I know sometimes that some of the client they like to use the realtor as their helper. Yeah. You cannot allow that to happen. Okay, there's a couple options. Okay. Uh -huh. Option one, uh, you can help them, but you try to minimize your time by helping them. So for example, in that situation, instead of you going there, uh -huh. you tell them, hey, you can, why don't you go there? Uh, once you go there, you, you call me, then I can talk to them on the phone. Right. That's one option, okay. Then option two, um, sometimes it's maybe hard to say it, but if you if it, if it doesn't work out for you, then you have to draw the line, because I know there are some people they just like taking total advantage of the of the agents. You know, it's like it's like they are, they expect the agent to work for free for nothing for everything. So yeah. sometimes if, if if it's a if it's an extreme case like that, you have to draw the line. You have to have a talk with them to you know. So that's another option. Another option is third option is. Uh, I kept saying this, oh, which is leads to us to the next course about uh, hiring, about getting help, about getting assistance. That's very important because most agents, most agents are working as a uh, self-employed person. You do not want to do that because if you're just a self-employed person, you're not gonna grow and you're gonna be you're gonna waste a lot of your time and you're gonna be tired all the time. You don't have time for anything. You don't have time for your family. You don't have time for your health. You don't, you don't have time for anything. So you, you, you want to, so I think most agents need to switch the mindset. You don't want to see yourself as a self-employed person. You want to see yourself as a business owner. How do you become a business owner? Here's the step. First, you increase your skill. For us, it's self skill, right? Increase the self skill so that you, your income increase. Once your income increase to a level, then you can hire helpers, uh, team, team members, uh, admin person, marketing person. Once you, help, you have enough money, then you can hire, hire the helpers. Once you have the helpers, then your business will grow. Once you have helpers, then you become, start to become a business instead of being a self-employed person. Once you become a business, then you can you yourself can be more efficient in what you do. You can just focus on the most, uh, you know, high producing activities. For example, go to listing appointment. So once you do that, then you have more money. Then you can maybe you're gonna grow more. Then you can get a, you can get a coach. And then when you, when you have a coach, then you can start making even more money. And then you can have a bigger business. So when you hire somebody, let's say if you have a staff member, then they can help the the client. But still, on the phone only, not in person. 
because the world in America is, is it's not like you know in other countries you know the geographic distance is very short you can go somewhere like in five minutes in America if you go help if you're gonna go help a client to do something it's gonna take half a day you cannot afford to do that so you at some point you need to make a hard decision well I do, do, would I I mean I might willing to to waste all my time by keeping this client, or am I willing to cut this client out to save me the time? You, I tell you for sure, if you know how to manage your time correctly, if you running a bit, your business as a business, not as a self-employed person, the second option is better to cut off that, that person. Because if you cut off that person, especially when you have a business, you can, you can, uh, you can you can uh, you know do much more business. If you cut off that person, you can do five times more business than you know satisfying that one person. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, you cannot. You, there's just some people there. Like, uh, remember? Okay, here's the thing. It's very important. I, I, I want to make this clear. There are many people out there, customer out there. They expect you to be a superman. They expect you to be a god. Why? They want a, the cheapest, the best, the, the, the most time. They want you to do everything. There's no such thing. If you look at all the big, all the perfect business, all the biggest business, all the best business out there, nobody can do that. So essentially, we have many realtors. We're killing ourselves by trying to please this unrealistic demand. What I mean by that is that, okay, so I'll give you an example. I, I sold a home in Rebelinda a couple months ago. Uh, I know this person very well. We're a really good friend. Normally, I do not rebate commission. So I, I rebate a commission because you know, it's an easy deal. We just, we just closed the deal. We just saw one, we just looked at a home once and we, 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 we closed. It only took, took me like 20 days. But after we closed the deal, the, the buyer was really pissed off because he the buyer was that she was saying that is a husband and wife. The, the wife was saying that I wasn't answering her phone enough. And I was my service wasn't good enough. But I told her, I said, hey, you want me to give you the commission, rebate your commission. So here's the thing. That's what the people want. They want you to do everything extra, extra, and give them a commission. You cannot do that. You're not supposed to do that. It, th there is a, there, there is a, there's a give and take, right? Either if you want my full service, they need you. You need to pay the full price. You cannot expect me to give you extra service and uh, pay me half price. And sometimes the agent they they feel bad. Oh, I didn't do a good job. No, it's not that you did not do a good job. It's because the pay is half price pay. If you're getting half price pay, you should you you should only spend half of the time. You should not get the half price pay and and spend twice or thirds of or five times the, the time. You cannot do that. So you need to stand your ground and need, you need to uh to 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 understand the worth of your time. I, I know it takes time because the only way you can be you can stand you, you can stand your ground is when you have client many clients that you can pick from. You can pick the good client, client and, and, and not work the, with the bad client. Only if you have overflow of your customer, then you can make this decision. If you, have, if, you have, if you don't have enough client, if all the client you have is crappy client, then you cannot pick and choose. So the, the key of this whole thing is that you got to, that's what I said before, right? Well, not, I, not what I, I said, it's a, it's a common knowledge. If you, you want to have a good business, you must be good at marketing, you must be good at sales, right? So that's why the reason I'm focusing on TikTok is I'm growing a big client base. When you have a lot of people, a lot of clients, then you can pick and choose. You can pick to work with the people you want to work with. The people that's wasting your time, that's in high demand, they want something that's impossible, then you just cut them off. Michael, did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so the 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 problem to the way to solve this problem is you want to have overflow of customer of clients so you can pick and choose and with the client that's a completely 
irrational, that's a completely, you know, <laughs> demand something that's uh, unrealistic, you just cut them off. You don't, you do not even want to service them. Because just look at it. Look at all the product, all the, look at all the big companies. Apple, the phone is great, right? But it's very expensive. Do you think Apple is going to sell you an Apple phone for, five, for, for $100? No. They're going to sell the Apple phone to you for $1,200, $1,500. Because it's good. Because it's, good. it's a good product. That's why you want to pay more money, right? Okay. Let's say if you, if you say, okay, I want a cheap phone. I don't want to pay $1,200. Okay. You go buy whatever, a, a Samsung phone for $200. It's okay. Because the phone is, is at that, the quality is at that level. That's why you're paying that price. But what a lot of agents are doing is, they're, they're trying to please the client so much. They're trying to sell the client an iPhone and they only charge $200. It's impossible because you're not going to make money and you're going to do it. You're going to kill yourself and you're going to, you, you, you're going to, you, you're going to, you, after you service the client, you, you actually put in more time and more expenses into it and you're not, you're not even making any money. There's no margin in it. There's no profit. I know you try to sell, your, I mean, help your client, but you, you got to eat too, right? Okay, any other questions? Okay, we're good. So almost 11.30. Uh, so next session, we're gonna talk about uh, how to, initially I was saying how to talk about hiring. Actually, we wanna, we're gonna make it into a bigger topic. How to change from a self-employed person to a business owner is very important. Because if, you, if you're just going to be a business, self-employed person, you're not going to grow. Your business will not grow. You, you will be tired. You will be always overworked. And you will always be you know, um, overwhelmed. So instead of operating your, your business as an individual, as a self-employed person, you want to operate your business as a business, as a business owner. Okay, if nothing else, then we're going to finish today's session. And uh, next week, we're going to talk about how to become a business owner and uh, how to... Uh, how to grow your business. Okay. See you guys next time.